on disease free survival results from 3,425 3, patients, postmenopausal patients, of the ABCSG 18 trial. Dr. Ganan. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to ACR and the uh, San Antonio uh, Symposium to have me back here in this press conference. I have been honored in being able to present some data, including on the previous subject, like randomized trials of endocrine treatment only for premenopausal patients. Uh, so this is about adjuvant denosumab. Um, here are my disclosures. I have a number of successful industry collaborations. None of them is uh, in relation to this uh, randomized clinical trial. The background of ABCSG18 is that we now finally have evidence that bone targeted treatment actually does not only is not only successful in treating bony metastases and preventing treatment induced bone loss, but also reduces recurrence uh, and improved survival, at least in postmenopausal breast cancer patients. And actually, it was two years ago uh, when Dr. Rob Coleman uh, from Sheffield, on behalf of a global collaboration, presented this data. Uh, exactly at this symposium, um, and, and that was uh, published in peer-reviewed form in the Lancet early this year. So the next generation of bone targeted uh, agent is uh, the anti-rank ligand antibody, uh, denosumab, um, and this is what we tested in ABCSG18, and uh, earlier this year at the occasion of the ESCO meeting, I was able to show that that adjuvant treatment of low-dose denosumab which is 60 milligrams twice a year, in fact, uh, cuts clinical fractures in half. So that's quite a dramatic difference. Um, and there is not uh, really a lot of, uh, actually, there's no measurable toxicity in this uh, double-blind trial. Now, the question remaining is, preventing fractures, well, that's fine. But are we also impacting on, on outcomes, on disease for survival, and eventually over survival, and there's two trials testing adjuvant denosumab with these uh, questions. This is DCARE, which is ongoing, and ABCSG18, which I'm presenting today. So very briefly, this is the trial design, uh, 3,400 postmenopausal patients all on AI. This is a placebo-controlled, double-blind, multicenter trial, 58 centers in Austria and Sweden. Um, and the primary endpoint, as said, was time to first clinical fracture, presented at ASCO. And secondary endpoints include other bone factors, but also disease-free uh, uh, survival. Just to remind you, this is the primary endpoint result, hazard ratio 0.5, basically cutting fractures in half, and demonstrating overall in this trial, focusing on bone health, that the overall frequency of fractures in these patients who are at low risk for disease recurrence but at high risk for fracture is higher than we previously assumed and were previously re reported uh, in other, question, uh, other trials. So following these primary endpoint results, the IDMC recommended to us that we should offer patients the option of unblinding. So what they said, well, you cannot keep going with a placebo group and having, you know, run patients into uh, clinical fractures which are relevant, so this is not some back pain, this is a fracture of your wrist, your hip, uh, any clinical fractures. So what we are going to do, we are going to offer during the year 2016 all trial patients the option of being unblinded if they, after advice from, from their physician, want to be unblinded and it turns out that they were in placebo, they will be offered uh, the antibody for three years. However, since this would somewhat uh, compromise the in integrity of the you know, blinded outcome data, the recommendation was do a, a DFS analysis now based on a time-driven uh, analysis, and this is exactly uh, what we did. So disease for survival in this trial is defined as time to any evidence of local or distant metastasis, contralateral breast cancer, secondary cancer, or death from any cause, and this is a, a quite common uh, definition. Briefly, demographics, 3,425 uh, 3, patients, a quite a common postmenopausal breast cancer population we see in the Western world. Median age, 64 years, uh, about three out of four tumors uh, smaller than two centimeters, 71% node negative disease. One out of four patients had adjuvant chemotherapy or neoadjuvant chemotherapy, and all patients had adjuvant AI. 
Uh, again, we did not find a measurable difference between those two sub-Q injections with the antibody and the placebo injections in this double-blind trial. So this is the intention to treat disease for survival result. As you can see, there were 203 DFS events in the placebo group and 167 uh, in the denosumab group. This gives a hazard ratio of 0.816 or 19% relative improval, which because we are somewhat low on events is of borderline statistical significance. In absolute figures, the benefit is about 1% after three years, 2% after five years, and 3% um, at seven years of follow-up. We did uh, quite a number according to an um, uh, intensive statistical analysis plan, sensitivity analysis, because there was a couple of patients, so-called fast losers for bone mineral density, who uh, started active treatment, 52 patients actually in there. If you censor them, then you see that the numbers change a little bit, but in general, uh, the message is quite clear. Um, this is exploratory just obtaining signals for which subgroups may benefit uh, more or not at all from uh, adjuvant denosumab. And there's some indication uh, that early start of the treatment together with the eye would be good. Large patients with larger tumors would benefit a little bit more ductal uh, histology uh, and high luminality, so to speak, uh, in modern terms. Just to give you an example, uh, this is 950 patients uh, with tumors of two centimeters or more. Uh, and when you look at the absolute differences, I mean, this uh, goes to about 4% at three years, 7% at five years, and more than 10% at seven years, uh, which uh, indicates that, uh, um, you know, that's quite a relevant uh, difference. Just to put it in perspective, uh, indirect, so caution, an indirect comparison with the bisphosphonate uh, meta-analysis uh, um, of the Oxford group, uh, you can see that it's 14% relative difference over there, 3% benefit on recurrence after 10 years, so I believe it's fair to say that adjuvant denosumab does at least uh, as much as adjuvant bisphosphonates do. So in summary, uh, these time-driven DFS analyses indicate that adjuvant denosumab actually improves DFS in the ITT, it's of borderline statistical significance, but uh, sensitivity analysis show that that may be a conservative estimate. To stress again, this is a very safe treatment, and my clinical conclusion is that adjuvant denosumab reduces the risk of disease recurrence or death. This benefit is similar to what bisphosphonates can do. It comes in addition to uh, highly significantly reducing clinical and vertebral fractures. Uh, and I believe that uh, we should actually offer this treatment to postmenopausal breast cancer patients on adjuvant AI. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Duncanant. So just to summarize, this is a randomized clinical trial on 3,400 uh, postmenopausal women with uh, breast cancer, ER-positive breast cancer, who received three years of uh, adjuvant denosumab. And what the study showed was that not only the denosumab treatment decreased fracture risk, but also improved disease-free survival. So, you know, we have all these, and, and the meta-analysis, but several studies on bisphosphonates, and it's pretty clear, either from a subset uh, um, patient population or the whole study, that in postmenopausal women, bisphosphonate treatment improves disease-free survival and overall survival. And now we have the denosumab data. At the same time, we can't or we don't in clinic use those for our patients. What are we missing? What can we do to give these treatments to our patients to improve their outcomes? Well, you know, that, that, that's basically uh, a question of, uh, of access to innovation or for reimbursement, obviously, in some countries. In the U.S., the bisphosphonate story was always struggling with the fact that oral bisphosphonates are, are not licensed. And, uh, you know, giving IV, solitronic acid, has uh, a number of things which are cumbersome. There's no label for this. Um, and so it was not really accepted all the time. I mean, we do that over in Europe. I mean, I treat my patients regularly with bisphosphonates. They do it in the UK because, you know, when you have a treatment that gives you, I don't know, let's say between 3 and 10 percent improvement, which is more than AIs do over tamoxifen, which is more than chemotherapy does in, in some, and actually it's reasonably uh, cost-effective. Bisphosphonates are generic now around the world. Um, and then it comes down to the, uh, to the, to the question of, you know, who 
delivers the treatment. This, this is sub-Q, so basically it uh, could be given by any GP, which is great news for patients, but it may not be so good news for the oncology centers in keeping, you know, basically control of their patient's treatment. So I think we're still struggling with, you know, where does this stand and who really does need it. Um, if it comes down to, you know, being a doctor, um, then it comes down to, you know, what, how would you treat your mother? And definitely, if my mother were affected, she would get that treatment from tomorrow on. So you're switching your patients from the bisphosphonates to the nosumab starting Monday? I'm not, because switching was not the issue. But my new patients, I'm basically, you know, we have a different uh, 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 label in Europe. So in the U.S., if I'm correct, the low-dose denosumab label is breast cancer patients who are at high risk for fracture. And if you in interpret this generously, then basically all breast cancer patients are in there. It's less generous in Europe. So we uh, need to have established osteoporosis, which obviously is true only for a minority of breast cancer patients. There will be, following this result, discussions about uh, extension of, of the label and in environments where you can use off-label I think it will be done. So if I see a new patient next week, I will start her on these uh, two sub-Q injections for three years. 